And it's after lunch now at the Job Summit. Um, we keep meeting and talking to interesting people. We've come across a gentleman here who knows a lot about important stuff. His name is uh, Tinashe. And since our friend Tinashe is not here, <laughs> yes. we thought he might. He also him. seems to like Ralph Lauren and uh, colorful shoes or colorful <laughs> things. And I know what those shoes are called. They're called Air Jordans. Well, these are actually Zions. <laughs> Air Jordans. So you yeah. actually don't know what they're called. What's the difference between Zions and Air So you know, with uh, with bas basketball stars, they have their own brand of um, the main shoe. Mm -hmm. So you'd find that maybe Jason Tatum, he plays for the Celtics. He has his own line. Um, Luka Doncic um, has his own line as well. Camelo and that sort of thing. But they're all under um, uh, the Jordan brand. Oh, so yeah, they are age why So, yeah. so, so yeah, every all age Jordans. <laughs> no, right, no, they, 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 you, 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 I learned a word, a woke word for what you guys are doing. It's called gaslighting, <laughs> trying to make me Not think really. that I'm wrong. <laughs> You're correct. You're just uh, adding a bit of specifics. I don't know. Oh, if the camera, why, I don't yeah. know if the camera picked up the shoes of it. Do you, do you mind just raising your oh, foot a little bit? Okay, uh, great. I mean, they look special. Are they collectors? Is there something special about uh, them? No, really. I think these are the second editions under his line. Um, I think Zion, Zion, Zion is came into the league about three years ago. Um, is a lot of people say that he was the next LeBron. So uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around him, and so obviously the marketing team will give him a bit of um, special focus. And I think when he was still playing uh, college basketball, he once burst one of his shoes. So you know, they are actually quite tough and compact. You know, but also light as well. So um, you know, yeah, but the, but, 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 but the, but the real win in all of this is, is, is Michael Jordan himself because he collects a royalty for every other people's pay. royalty. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, yes. I definitely. think he makes about 90 million US dollars a year just from royalties. Wow. Uh, he's a billionaire now. It's a lot of money. It's a yeah, lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think I can do a George's? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, sounds sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Tinashe, thanks thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. What do you do? Sorry, uh, Ranga, maybe you could come and fix the banner. Um, it seems to be harassing Tinashe. It's harassing Tinashe. Yeah. If it was other Tinashe, I wouldn't mind. But. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so what, what do you do? Um, so I lead a team um, at, um, at Social Me. Social Me? Uh, yeah, Social Me. So we are an advertising agency. So initially, we started off as a digital agency uh, where we would just do social media campaigns and stuff like that. But, um, you know, as time went on, we actually realized that, look, there are other things that we are also good at. And so we started doing quite a number of things. Uh, for instance, I think our, um, you know, one of the ads that campaigns that people, most people are familiar with uh, is when we, um, it was for Zimnet, uh, where we suspended uh, about two cars on a tree. And, you know, I think it just blew up, went viral. And, and I think, oh, you were responsible for those cars that were hanging, oh, yes, that yes. were falling out of billboards and falling out of cars, uh, out of buildings. Well, not really, not really. I think it was the previous agency, but we, you know, we, we simply took over. The same thing. Um, and we took it to the next level. Yeah, we took it to the next level. I think just a few days ago, I think there was an accident along, um, you know, Seke Road near Coca Cola there. And, you know, my phone was buzzing the whole day. You were asking me, man, I, we hope you're not involved in, in, in this and stuff like that, you know. But they thought it was a, it was a campaign, you know. So oh, the, the one with the with the, yes, with the Isuzu been, flipped on top of another car. Yes, yes, that one with, with the bus and stuff like that. So, so I think for us, I think you know, in the short time that we have been um, in business, I think we've managed to, to make a name for ourselves. And I think you know, I think one of the biggest things has been the approach. You know, we believe in fresh ideas and different thinking. You know. Um, a lot of marketing, as it is right now, Zimbabwe is a little bit stale. Um, so it, just trying to, um, you know, shake things around, you know, change the game a little bit. Uh, it's not as easy because I think a lot of, um, you know, marketers, execs, um, they be still believe in the old way of doing things. But I think that world no longer exists. Um, in fact, when you talk about digital marketing and digital and digital marketing and marketing, I, for me, I don't think in a couple of years there'll be a distinction. You know? It'll, It'll just what, be marketing. It'll what just is be digital marketing? marketing? Yeah. What is digital marketing? Um, I mean, I mean, textbook stuff. It's always difficult to <laughs> to answer, but but I'll just explain is how I see it. I think for me, it's um, you know, it's it's just using new media to create, um, you know, generate quality leads. 
which you can then convert into actual customers. I think that's the end game. You know, whether you're doing something for engagement, for customer experience and so on, at the end of the day, you would want to have that ka -ching, you know, mm. the ka -ching sound, you know, like, you know, you know, it is like when, you know, like back in the day, you walk into supermarkets, uh, shop, they would have those old, um, you know, like, uh, what are they called? Cash registers. Cash registers, yeah. And every time you someone buys something, you hear the ka -ching Ching, sound, yeah. isn't it? Mm. So I think um, you shouldn't um, you shouldn't divorce uh, digital marketing from from the cash, you know, the ka -ching sound. It's very, but what very important. is digital marketing? I mean, you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean. Look, there are a number of things that that actually um, that you can actually term, um, you know, parts of digital marketing. Uh, for instance, you have social media marketing. I mean, social media is easily the most recognizable form of digital marketing, where you're using different platforms like your know, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Instagram sort of like and stuff TikTok. like that. Um, you know, and you know, I still believe, especially in Zim, we're still only scratching the surface. Mm. You know, because when you talk about Facebook marketing, someone will be saying, "Have you boosted our posts?" You know, for them, um, paid advertising is boosted something. Mm. Whereas, you know, I think Facebook is like a treasure trove of. Uh, you know, trade trophy for marketers. You know, there's really? a ton of things that you could do. Um, I think, you know, we talk of remarketing. You know, we have what we call pixels. So pixels are simply a, a piece of code that you, that, that, that are generated by Facebook and you place it on your website. Mm -hmm. So using that, um, that's how you end up like, let's say you go on before, you go on Amazon and stuff like that. Later on, you see... Um, an ad from Amazon or, or before, or, or um, you 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 start googling exactly. second-hand cars. Yes, and then all of a sudden, yes. before is appearing on your yes. timeline. Yes, it's because of you know like you know those uh, you know those the simply tracking tracking codes and stuff like that. But in Zim, I mean, like we, we we don't talk of that. You know, we only talk of um, you know have you boosted something? Let's put five dollars. We want this. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do. You know, you can you know like especially now where the platforms have moved from, you know, um, where they are actually, they've moved to, uh, you have to pay to play. Uh, you know, you may have 100,000 followers, but uh, organically you can reach maybe 5,000, if it's a really good post, or even 20 or so, but you can never go above 50,000, isn't it? Unless maybe it's something, something super, super hilarious. Like, like an Isuzu flipped on top of... Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, something like that. Oh, that's not hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so... Well, it is, actually. It's, 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 okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know if anyone got injured in that accident. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, you mean the, well, this one? Yeah. No, I, well, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think there were no fatalities, so, which is, I think, is the most important yeah. thing. So, you know, you're able now... So. If you want to engage now with the rest of your audience, like the rest of the hundred thousand, you can actually run an engagement campaign. You know, you can then you can actually you can also run uh, campaigns for app downloads and stuff like that. You know, a lot of times we um we simply make apps for the sake of apps, um, but you don't have anyone actually downloading them, using them, and stuff like that. So, so this is what you guys do. So this is exactly what we do. <laughs> we. And how, how did you learn how to do this? Well, the, I, because there's no university for this. Maybe now there is, but I yeah. think you're, you're too old to be. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. I, I think I think you know. Just as I was um, saying, you know, when I was on the panel, it's not really about education anymore. It's not about formal education, rather. Uh, you don't have an MBA uh, from the University of Zimbabwe, but I've never used it. Uh, to, How do you know you haven't used I it? I mean, to, 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 to get a job. <laughs> you know, Maybe because when I was starting to make yeah, yeah. business decisions. Definitely, definitely. I think, I think that's also something that actually separates us because you have pure creators in mm. the industry. You know, people who are just like real techies, but they don't really understand the, the business side of things. You know? mm -hmm. So that actually uh, gives us a bit of um, leverage, you know, because we're able to, when we speak to a lot of these marketers and so on, we spend a lot of time in, in the corporate world. We are able to see, oh, you know, you know the language, you know how, you know what they're interested in and stuff like that. So that also has given us a So if, if you had to describe yourself um, on the spectrum of um, entrepreneurial business person or creative, you know, what best describes you? Well, I don't know. Um, it may sound a little bit cheesy, corny, 
<laughs> but um, I think, you know, I would probably describe myself as the DJ Khaled of... Uh, <laughs> You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, come on a bit. But, but uh, here's the, here's the reason. Do you know who DJ Khaled is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to, quote, to name one of his songs. <laughs> so the reason why I say that is I'm able to see, you know, like to get interesting bits, exciting mm. bits of, you know, like if something is great is happening there, I'm able to take uh, part of that, uh, you know, from the creative bit. I'm also able to take, um, you know, something from the business side of things. You know, and just merge everything together, you know. So uh, I, I don't really believe in my team. I'm the best or the most intelligent, but I've got really brilliant guys. But but for us, what makes us work together is just being able to, um, you know, bring everyone together, the ideas, and, and, you know, just come up with an exciting, uh, you know, campaign or visual and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'll say. But I want to go back to how, so how did you learn this new world skill of digital marketing? Because there was no university to go to. Yeah. So, or, or, or when you did go to university, there probably weren't courses around uh, digital marketing. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, if I'm to be really honest, I think it started um, during my attachment. I was, at, I was at African Sun and, you know, I was just reading a lot of books, thinking Grow Rich and stuff like that. And I, this burning desire just to be great. And, you know, Milton Kamen, I don't know if you guys know him. Uh, he was running exciting, um, um, you know, workshops around that. But I didn't have money to attend those. So I simply went to Milton and said, look, um, I want to work with you. Uh, I want to learn. Um, so I spent the rest of my attachment internship with, with him. And afterwards as well, I went back and he introduced me to, he introduced me to Twitter. Um, he introduced me, and so Twitter for me was, I mean, Twitter for me is like really, really, really close to my heart because I think for me, that's where I started interacting, engaging with people on, you know, like other tech, uh, techie people and so on. And I mean, like those days, you had platforms like Hash, um, it was what, um, uh, Tagged, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I mean, like I, I can't even remember them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I was just like really dabbling in those platforms, started learning, um, you know, just started following Milton Kamen. And it's really, really great with this uh, techie thing. And from there, started doing workshops. And I think it's because, you know, I had been totally. You started teaching other people. Yes. You know, so initially when I started doing those, um, uh, I you think. Believe people used to pay to go and be taught how to use Twitter? Well, it, 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 no, no, not really. I mean, I didn't monetize until maybe five years ago, that's, that sort of thing. I had another job. I was working at um, First Mutual, so, um, you know, that paid the bills, but this was my passion, you know, so I, mm. I simply, I did this because I wanted to. And, you know, I remember, like, telling everybody that, look, guys, digital is going to be the next bit, big thing here in Zim and stuff like that. So I started making a lot of noise and eventually started writing blogs and stuff like that. Um, I think then we didn't have blogs like you guys, but we had blogs and so it simply took off from there. And, and for me, um, when I went to Liquid as well, uh, Zo, uh, I think it was, it was also a very, very important learning curve for me um, because you, you get the, the, the resources are, we're not limited. You could experiment, you know, started experimenting with a lot of things, um, you know, I, I think a lot of things that we do uh, are things that I started doing at, um, at, 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 at Zoll Liquid, creating videos and stuff, you know, just having a passion and start learning from there and obviously on, your online courses and stuff like that. And also teaching, I think teaching, whilst you're teaching, it really helps in terms of learning as well. Yeah. So, so, so basically, if I can summarize, you... You were introduced by a mentor. Uh -huh. You went and did your own research as well. Uh -huh. You practiced. Mm -hmm. And part of your practicing was teaching. Mm -hmm. And then at some stage, you got yourself into a position where there were resources yes. available. Yes. So you could experiment now. So you could do, um, you know, like your Google Ads. Uh, I mean, Google Ads, to be honest, um, the social media aspect is not really difficult. Uh, but I think it's the creativity, you know, the, you know, innovating on ideas and stuff like that. Uh, but, but, I mean, for you to even learn that, you had to be in an environment where yes. you could practice. 
So a very interesting thing, if you read um, a book that Rufar and I are both very uh, passionate about, is Malcolm Gladwell's uh, Outliers. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, that's pretty much the same story yeah. with all the tech moguls. Uh, they basically were introduced to something, they took an interest in it. Uh, <clears throat> most of them tended to have a mentor at some point in their lives. Mm -hmm. Most of them ended up having either deliberately or by accident, being in a position where they had access to yeah. resources mm -hmm. so they could mess around with it. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. I think that pretty much sums it. Wow. Um, but now that you're running a business, mm -hmm. are you able to f access and find the necessary skills? Do the, do, do the uh, young people that are leaving university now or coming into the workforce now, do they... Do they have the skills that you need? Well, and, and if not, how are you guys have, uh, coping um, with this? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's yes and no. Um, the ones that you find are um, very expensive, uh, to be honest. I mean, if you have to pay someone a lot of money uh, because they used to have it money, so you can't just... So if you pay people a lot of money, it means that your service ends up being expensive as well because you, at the end of the day, you have to make a profit. But, um, you know, the strategies that we we're trying to to do is actually train our own people so yes you have a mixture of experienced guys but you know we're also training uh, a lot of people as well um, like i said um, social media digital marketing is we're still way behind um, you know in south africa i introduced my sister to digital marketing and when she came back after about a year or two you know she was almost as close to um, you know, where I, where I am right now, um, I say almost as close because, look, I'm always continuously learning and, 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 and developing. But so but it just tells you, like, the general, um, you know, standard in South Africa is actually way, way um, ah, yeah. ahead of, you know, the standard that we have in Zimbabwe. So what do we need to, to, to do to raise the skills of our young people? I, I think because, because this is a skill you can employ globally, right? You could, you could be doing digital marketing for yeah. for Amazon sitting in Harare. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I think I think it comes down to number one. I think it's the leadership that we have with different companies. I think they have to understand that you know things have changed, things have shifted. Um, they ha really have to understand. You know, when we say that we want to run a digital campaign, this is what it means. Uh, it's not just about you know uh, just going on Facebook. It's not something that their kids because they're on Facebook or TikTok uh, that they can do. You know, it's actually a, a big profession. So. I think we need to see it as a, a big, big profession, you know, so that we can actually give it a bit of more respect. Um, then also, I mean, for the institutions that train and develop, I think it needs to be a lot, little bit more practical. Um, you know, I think now, I think in Zimbabwe, people are concerned about having certificates, uh, qualifications, stuff like that. It doesn't matter, um, you know, uh, in, in this industry. You can, I mean, like some of the most brilliant designers, videographers, uh, even, um, you know, digital marketers that I know, uh, they don't have single qualification. No, I mean, um, we, we, we're doing, I don't know if you'd call this, yeah. do, you call the, do you call what we do with digital marketing? Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it, is, and, and, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. I mean, obviously. And, and the, none of us have qualifications. In this. Yeah. We, we, we're self-taught. Exactly. So, so, that's so, so I, I've got a question for you. Um, and it's inspired by your namesake, who mm -hmm. um, often gripes about um, the business community in Zimbabwe uh, being inward looking. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so we've got a population of about 15 million. Yeah. Uh, if you look at um, Sub-Saharan Africa or just Southern Africa, you know, there's a market of 300 million yeah. people. And yet a lot of uh, business leadership in our country mm -hmm. is focused exclusively on the smaller market of just 15 million people and has no interest, it seems, in expanding across the border. Now, your business, by its very nature, means that you can be servicing a client in Namibia or in Kenya or anywhere in the world, really, from here, as long as you've got uh, value to add. So what's Sorry. your experience been? So, you so, so there could be servicing a client of the agency who is remote, mm -hmm. or you could be selling a product on behalf of a Zimbabwean company mm -hmm. to the global market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so the, the, the opportunity is actually two pronged. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, to what extent, you know, um, does your business um, do work outside Zim, if at all? And do you do it for Zimbabwean businesses that are outside? 
Well, I, I mean, uh, first and foremost, I think Tanash is a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I really enjoy, you know, like, you know, his commentary uh, on this show and on Twitter as well. And, you know, I, I think you guys are great. Is he paying? No, 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 no. I think... No, 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 I think he's just a great guy and, and, and this sort of thing. You guys, I also follow you guys as well. And um, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Now, coming back to your question, I think we've done some work um, outside. We've done work not for Zimbabwean companies in, in South Africa. We've actually done for uh, other businesses in South Africa. Okay. South African companies yes. in South Africa? Yes, yeah. yes. From your Harare office? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, to be honest, um, we, didn't end up, we didn't have an office until this year. Okay. Uh, we're working from initially. We started working from here, Krista. Uh, you know, just by um, you know, there's a nice restaurant there. Yes, in the coffee shop. They've, yeah. they've, they've got a lovely uh, business lounge here. It's it's that's great. Got, got a great atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. You you know, like I once read a book, so I digress. Are, are you getting paid for this? Place? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> are, 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 you ad, to, eh? are you trying that's to get Ranga to chastise me? So, so there's this other book that I read uh, by Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Work Week. Mm, mm. And, you know, I'm a huge, huge fan of what he was saying. And, you know, like, you can work from anywhere. Mm. So one of my goals was just to work from, from anywhere by, you know, sitting on a co in a coffee shop with just a laptop and, you know, just making a lot of money and doing what you love. So um, that... And, co and collecting sneakers. Oh, so, yes. Oh, yes. Then I, I'm a huge, huge sneaker, sneaker buff. You know, sneakers are great. Uh, man, I can't, you know, I think now the pressure is on. Uh, <laughs> next time I see you guys, I need to be wearing something different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we've done a lot of work for um, companies, you know, in not a lot, but we've done a bit uh, in South Africa. Uh, I think, you know, our skills, I think in Zim, we have, you know, talented young people, you know, and, you know, because like when you compare the stuff that, you know, people in South Africa, all over Africa doing, and you compare it here, I think we are miles ahead. Okay, um, really? In terms of the average, like in terms of the actual skill set, people do animation, um, you know, motion graphic video really? and stuff like that. And I'll tell you this, um, you know, just for, it's called Focalistic, uh, the um, Ama Piano, um, you know, outfits. I think just recently they did a shoot with, um, with some guy in, in Zim. Uh, he's a friend of mine, um, and I mean, we, we used to use him for some of our ads, you know, in terms mm. of, you know, just, you know, color grading, mm -hmm. you know, in Zim, when you talk of color grading, a lot of people don't, don't actually know, and say, yeah, guys, I, we have I to definitely don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know who Focalistic is, <laughs> that's, the, that's the name, right? Oh, yeah, 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 that, that's, that's the name, I mean, like, you, you, you listen to Ama Piano and stuff like Yeah, that. I'm a big fan of Ama yeah. Piano. Yeah. Do you yeah. know them? Yeah. Um, I don't know any of the names. Yeah, I just, but, I just, but, yeah. I just have a playlist on, on Apple. You, you know what? And I just listen. You know their music. You just don't know it was sang by them, but you yeah, know their yeah. music and, uh. and stuff like that. So they're actually having you know videographers from Zim actually mm. doing work in South Africa. Okay. You know, so that tells you in terms of the skill set that we have. Yeah, that's that's um, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, like even even before I left Liquid, I, I remember doing a superhero sort of like advert. But I think the market wasn't ready for it. I think I remember that. You did that. Yeah, we, we did that, you know, so, and look, it was great. I mean, these are things that we can do that no one else in the region can do. Um, I've seen oh, so some... it was done locally? Yeah, it was done locally. You know, it was really done locally and stuff like that. I mean, it was great. To be honest, I think it's still, it's, it's a shame that, you know, they had to take it down for uh, whatever reason. But, um, you know, it just tells you in terms of what we can do. And if we were to export those sort of skills. We've also done work in, in you know, for the Sweden market as well. Um, and, you know, these are things, you know, and these are things that we, I mean, we, we are outwardly, um, um, you know, we focus outward as, as well, you know, so that we can actually, but yeah, it, what a pleasure, like, you know, um, having US dollar income and Zim dollar expenses. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> did, did you remit you your 20%? Anyway, <laughs> moving, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously, there are a lot of things that you know, um, you know, the, um, the, the the regulators can actually do to to make it um, even easier. more lucrative. Yeah, yeah even I mean, more lucrative, e easier, yeah. you know, you know, because I think 
there's a lot of there's a lot of money to be made out there there's a lot of income that can actually help um uh, you know the country as well and and for me i was i was excited to be honest that you know when whenever the governor was doing his monetary policy and stuff like that i knew that i was you speaking to me you know uh, you know, I was contributing something. You wanted some so. of your money, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but we have, we 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 were building the nation as well. So it's yeah, great, so, yeah. So, so seeing as we're at a job summit and we we we've, we've been discussing to some extent education, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the opportunities that um, we have as a country is to get out ahead of this trend of remote work, build skill set in spaces like digital, yeah. and have you know create incubate um businesses that are based here doing this world class kind of work and earning um hard, hard currency cards. so that maybe you know 5 10 15 years from now instead of just getting diaspora remittances we're actually generating income from there from the diaspora in a meaningful way from mm -hmm. well not necessarily from the diaspora i mean we talked about this with uh, one of our earlier guests right mm -hmm. If, if we're collecting 1.9 billion, or we're receiving 1.9 billion dollars a year mm -hmm. from our diaspora, mm -hmm. this is what, this is not their savings and it's not their consumption. This is only what they're sending home for their mm -hmm. families. What more if those guys were still doing the same jobs for the same overseas companies, but living here? Yeah, yeah. And they're consuming here and saving here. Exactly, exactly. We would be, we could literally double our GDP. Definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, if yeah. not more. Because, I mean, if they can send nearly $2 billion to look after their mothers and pay hospital bills for their uh, sick relatives, how much do you think they're actually earning? Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Bro. How much are they spending on their rent, on their groceries? Mm -hmm. How much are they setting aside for a rainy day? They're contributing to pensions in their, ho in their host countries. They're buying insurance policies in their host, in their host countries. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much, how much are they spending on all of that? Yeah. 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 And, I, and I also think, you know, there's scope just, you know, from... Um, regional perspective or from a, a national competitive perspective, it, whatever conditions that we would um, have to put in place to make those people actually move back home and work here would actually attract other people, you know, uh, from Zambia, not, not the region, whatever. Moment, yes. Because if you create a framework that makes it um, Zimbabwe a great place for people to live here mm -hmm. and earn hard currency doing work for people outside the country, then, you know, you, you'd get all sorts of talent. You know, you know, an interesting story. You know, I lived in Mozambique for, mm -hmm. for a bit. And um, when there was a global financial crisis, uh, 2008, 2010, mm -hmm. and Portugal was in the doldrums, mm -hmm. there was a net migration of young Portuguese people to Mozambique. Mm -hmm. not, not former Mozambicans who were repatriating. White Portuguese citizens went on the internet, googled opportunities around the world, and they looked at Mozambique and they said, "I think my life would be better <laughs> in Mozambique than in Portugal." Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and that shows you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a global competition for working working age mm -hmm. people yeah. am among nations. Oh, yeah. It's not just working age. So mm -hmm. uh, a big part of the community in Cape Town for example, well, they is retire. retired Brits, mm -hmm. right? Because they, 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 they're they getting this uh, yeah. stipend in pounds, yeah. right? And they're saying, well, it's it's raining and and miserable half the time. The yeah, other half of the time, it's it's cold, Yeah. okay? Yeah. And I can, you know, a pound is worth so much more in Cape Town where everything is cheaper, plus the weather's great most of the time. Yeah. And they actually emigrate yeah. and uh, live out the rest of their lives uh, in Cape Town. And I always actually wonder why, um, you know, the Victoria Falls or other parts of Zimbabwe, which are quite beautiful, um, don't attract the same kind of, uh, you know. Yeah. Look, look, look. For me, I think I think Zimbabwe is a great nation. Um, I think everyone will, will agree. If you have your money here, um, this is probably the best place to, you know, work and just spend your money. Wow. Well, <laughs> if you care about electricity. If you don't, if you don't like, if, if you don't like losing four percent of your money to the government every time you just think about your money, yeah, uh, yeah. Of, of course, there, there are things like that, but um, it's now two percent. 
Yeah. So it's, it's half as bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So every time you think about your money, yeah. you lose two yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah. To the state. But 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 I'm I'm really optimistic. Um, you know about the prospects of the country moving forward. Um, I think you know if are you, are, you, are you attached to electricity by any chance? Uh, no. <laughs> do, do you like having lights? Uh, yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. I do, but but look, I I really think that in Zim right now, I think you know whilst it's all gloomy and I think there's a lot of things that need to be done, but I think you know as as young people, we um, I think we can make a difference. You know, I don't think it's the politics that's going to carry the uh, the nation out of whatever that we're in. Uh, because to be honest, I think if I waited for everything to be ready, I wouldn't have started my company. Yeah. Um, Please do me a favor and infect your namesake with some of this optimism. <laughs> 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 because, because, because if you talk to the other Tinashe, you think the sky is falling. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, and yet he's investing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, building, I, he's yeah I, I mean, I'm, I mean, to be honest, you know, I've got, I've got cousins, I've got, you know, uh, people are doing a, a lot of great things, and, and I think for me that they're the ones who just inspire me. I mean, like, I mean, I just wake up in the family group. Someone is like, um, I'm, I'm looking for uh, whatever, uh, fifty tana, whatever truck and stuff like that. I'm saying, where are you getting the money to do all of these things? Why can't I get? Uh, why can't I also be involved in this? So. It pushes me to work hard, and and to be honest, I'll be, I'll be very very um, frank with you guys. I think business has been has been you know it's growing. The business is actually growing uh, because I think it's because I didn't give up. If I had given up, uh, gone back to employment, I think by the way, I think I can still get. Um, I'm still very much employable, but I think when you stay with something for a long time. Uh, I think you also start, um, um, you know, enjoying the rewards of that persistence, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, just that lasting power and stuff like that. And I think in, in Zimbabwe, like every other day, you're hearing that, look, there's gold as big as this, which has been found there, and a lot of construction vehicles and stuff like that. When I was in Ethiopia, um, you know, I visited Ethiopia just before I, um, you know, I quit my job. Um, I, I went for an MIT sponsored event, um, was at Liquid in Ethiopia, and there were a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, some even younger than me, and they were giving a lot of services to our big companies. And so and I said to myself, why can't I do the same thing? So that's how I got into uh, entrepreneurship and stuff like that. But whilst I was there, um, I also noticed that you know the, the economy at that time was booming, and you could tell by the amount of uh, you know construction that was happening and stuff like that. And I see the same thing happening in Zim. Maybe not at that level yet, but there's a lot of construction activity happening. That should tell you something, you know, that something is happening, isn't it? Oh, um, yeah. So uh, we, we have this debate all the time with your namesake, by the way. Uh, you know, I, 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 I see the construction. I see uh, economic activity. Perhaps it's not captured in the national accounts for some reason. But I, I, I tend to be of the view that uh, if you have a company like Delta mm -hmm. that uh, is a good proxy for aggregate demand, seeing, you know, not just mm -hmm. like nominal Zim dollar sales, but literally the hectoliters of beer that they're moving and, and, and carbonated soft drinks and that sort of thing. If, if those numbers are going up, mm -hmm. uh, people are consuming more. It mm -hmm. speaks to an economy that's also growing. That's, uh, you know, it, uh, it might not be growing as much in the formal sector as people would like, but I think that you know, uh, the growth is there. I think Zimbabweans are resilient. Zimbabweans yeah. are entrepreneurial. Um, why do you, do you think that we celebrate entrepreneurship enough no, no, no. In, in, in Zimbabwe? No, no, no. I, I think I think we are more um, of, a, of a nation, um, you know, we're interested in other things like, you know, the social, social lights, uh, you know, entertainment and stuff like that. I mean, you can actually count the number of really successful um, entrepreneurs um, in Zimbabwe right now. But I'll push back. On, on, on. I'll, I'll push back to both of you guys. I mean, I think that's the same in any country. I mean, do you think the average American can tell you the top ten richest Americans or the top ten greatest American entrepreneurs? At the same time, do you think the average American can rattle off the uh, top ten Billboard songs? I think it's the same in any society. Well, I, th I think I think it's in Zim, you know, in America, you talk of the Silicon Valley and you know that, look, in terms of innovation, technology and stuff like that, you know, they actually have a place for that. In Zim, you can't speak of, uh, of any place. All right. 
no, no. Well, when you talk when you talk of Harare right now, I think you probably talk of you know tax shops and stuff like that where people, um, you know, like the the micro economy. Uh, so to uh, speak. Uh, but you, okay. So I, 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 I tend to agree with. I, I, I think I your tend to agree with. Has infected me because you're starting a business. The other Tinashe, if you're sitting here, would be telling us that he's starting a business. Uh, you're you've started a couple of businesses in, uh, in the past couple of years. I'm making stupid investments that I, I, I don't know. But but, if but your ever question. Um, but your question is, do you, you say do you feel that Zimbabwe uh, celebrates entrepreneurship? Yes. And I'm, I'm not saying there's no entrepreneurship happening, but I'm simply saying there is. We don't seem to celebrate it. Yeah, there's no. But, but are we different from any other nation? I mean, I mean, like if you go to, you know, like er everywhere else, those guys are literally rock stars. I mean, like when you talk of yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, is you know, is a rock but star. You know? is, even even that guy, is, what's is, his is, name? Is, 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 is Strive Masio any less of a rock star in Zimbabwe? Well, he is. But is uh, Philip Chiangwa uh, any less of a Rockstar. Okay. Philip Antaranyika. All right. Maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's there, but um, I think maybe the question is, are we doing enough to, to support, you know, entrepreneurs in Zim? Um, and I think that should also be reflected in, you know, things like, you know, the national budget, you know, the monetary, uh, monetary policy and stuff like that. You know, I, you know, like you want to have policies which... Uh, which encourage. I don't know of any other ent entrepreneur who is enjoying, you know, like a tax break. You know, you know, like when uh, during recession, you know, a lot of companies in America they benefited from, you know, like um, bailouts and stuff like that. Do, do we do have that in Zim? Do you know if you set up your company in a special economic zone, you get tax breaks? Do you know that if you set up your business in a growth point, you get tax breaks? Um, well, maybe, but look. Look, the, the, well, the, the policy framework for the most part in our country, sadly, is not ideal for business. Yeah. And to the extent exactly, that we exactly. do have these incentives, I don't think the state does a great job in no, making it known. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, they don't like giving up their tax revenue. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that it's very difficult, I mean, like, to actually have, like, a, starting a business. Like, it's only this year that we, uh, you, we have, a, like, a proper, proper office. Um, the other times, I think we're renting, you know, like, you know, different places and stuff like that. It wasn't somewhere where I was really, really proud to take my, you know, executive clients, um, you know, and, and, you know, like in, in other countries, in Ethiopia, they have a whole industrial park, not just one, but lots. They have got, you know, hubs and stuff like that. In Zim, you can, you can actually count the number of hubs, which are functional, by the way. I only know of Stan Big One and the big ABC ones and stuff like that. Of you know, like everyone is actually going there. So, um, so you you want to so you're probably thinking to yourself how many ideas how many businesses you know are actually losing out because there isn't an environment you know which, which forces I mean like just think some something as simple like um, like internet you know you get internet and electricity you know <laughs> ah so you do like electricity <laughs> <laughs> of course of course I mean like we use it all the time. Uh, so, <laughs> which is all the time without electricity you, you you're in the digital marketing oh business. yes <laughs> oh yes so definitely i mean so but if we had more of that more of those i think that would really make a, a huge huge difference um you know i think at the hub that i was at i think it was stand big hub at some point i used to go there um i'll tell you the number of startups that actually went to you know um you know nigeria one and stuff like that uh that got a lot of funding when I was there in Ethiopia, you know, you know, the startups were talking about, oh, we received about two million, um, you know, funding stuff like that. I mean, two million in Zim. I think a lot of big companies. Uh, 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 a bank would do a press conference if, if <laughs> it was two million. <laughs> it's no, like that. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, but we've got to, we've got to yeah. uh, grow this to an end. We've had so much fun. Please come by right. uh, another time. It's unfortunate it's, that you don't drink. Was it? Well, I, I do. I just wanted to have a clear, clear, clear head. Uh, he's, also doing the, the, he's, um, he's clearly taking us too seriously. <laughs> yeah, he's getting in the way of uh, good discussions. <laughs> yeah, of course, but I, man, I, I love, I love, I love whiskey. I love Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. Oh, this is what we have. Well, that's yeah. what we're drinking. It's, it's my, it's my go-to drink. Yeah. Would you like? Um, would, would you like a, just to sniff it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, it sounds good, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, it's been lovely. It's been lovely having you along. Yeah, uh, we've had lots of fun yeah. at the job summit. Hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this. I think some of the people we've spoken to do know what they're talking about. And I hope that 
we hope that this inspires thoughts, it inspires discussions between you and yours. We hope that if you've got access to people that make policy, you take some of these discussions to them. Because all that we want is a better Zimbabwe. Stay safe, be good. If you can't be good, be good at it.